Hello everybody, Hello. sorry to keep you out of the sun and the jacuzzis <laughs> and, uh, and the bars and the gambling, um, but you can do that tonight. So uh, thanks for having me here Mike, it's great to share the uh, floor really with Robert, Mika and David. Um, so today I'm, I'm going to move pretty quickly because uh, we've, we've run, over, run over a little bit of time which is, uh, which is kind of standard procedure with these kind of things. But I want to go through quite a few different subjects here. I'm trying not to repeat anything that the other speakers have said, but some, there are some crossovers, because the way I look at things, I look at things from a sort of global perspective, I just can't help it, I've become like an obsessed megalithomaniac traveller, uh, and I get all around the world at any opportunity, on cruises, boats, balloons, anything you like. Um, these are some uh, uh, photos uh, of these sort of serpents, which I keep finding all over the world. Now, only part of this talk is going to cover this idea that there was like some kind of serpent elite, what I'm interested in is what that means. I believe it has some connection with earth energies, with ley lines, with grids and things like this, as well as the rising of the Kundalini and possibly shamanic and psychedelic things as well. Uh, but as we go through, we'll see, um, you know, we'll see how all this fits together. This is my book. It's a small book. It's not anywhere near the size of this. It's deceived a few people when I've shown it. Oh, it's tiny. But I put together a whole kind of uh, history and outline of what is going on with earth grids, ley lines, sacred sites, and earth energies into one little volume, which was an intense amount of work. We're going to cover some of that in the lecture today. Um, here's, it's actually cut off at the bottom, but it doesn't matter. I just want to sort of paraphrase a few points from this. This is one of my mentors, one of the legendary figures who inspired me more than anyone else in the world, I have to admit. He died a few years ago. Founded Megalithomania with us, uh, this conference and these tours and events we put on. Uh, there's me and him up there on the, on the top right. And John Michelle wrote the brilliant book The View Over Atlantis back in 1969, and he was talking about things we're talking about today, but a long time uh, before, before now. And he was a real visionary, a real pioneer. And he, he saw this picture of the way these mounds, megaliths, and ancient sites went from horizon to horizon all over the planet and we still even even back in 1969 and still today we're still trying to work out what was going on uh, he was very aware of the serpent we called serpent or dragon lines these energies uh, and how the symbolism became part of that so i'm really kind of following on from john michelle's work because he was a big inspiration for me uh, and his unfortunate passing left a, a sort of wide hole about you know, in this kind of research especially in england uh, so I'm going to start with um, some sort of ideas about grids. This is uh, a painting my brother did for my book. This is uh, from a Hopi um, creation myth where the creator created these two brothers to create sound and structure with the crystal at the centre of the earth. And with these two harmonies happening, it created what was called spots of the form. And these are power spots on the surface of the globe. Uh, I go into it in more detail in my book, I'm going to move fairly quickly through this, but it just shows you that even very early creation myths of different cultures around the world has some inkling about kind of grids or global patterns. But let's jump on planet for a moment here because this is kind of, you know, we are on an ancient alien cruise, so I want to just have a few little potential alien things thrown in there. Um, I've been fascinated by these grids, but when I started looking at other planets and looking at what other researchers have found, uh, there's a remarkable amount, amount of geometries and alignments and anomalies on other planets. Mars is a classic one. Uh, and you can see here, this is the start of what we're getting into grids here. Uh, if you place a tetrahedron in a sphere, it touches the surface at 19.47 or 19.5 degrees above or below the equator, depending which way you put it in. Interestingly, there's massive volcanoes, uh, the Olympus Mons volcanoes, are at that latitude on Mars. We have Hawaii. We have that on Earth, and there's other anomalies throughout our solar system on various planets that also have stuff on the surface at 19.5 degrees north or south latitude. And that kind of compelled me. We even have um, some solar flare activity peaks at the, around this kind of latitude as well. This just shows you uh, where Olympus Mons is, which is the largest volcano complex um, in our solar system. 
We also have uh, odd geometries on uh, Miranda, Uranus's moon. We have pentagons and hexagons kind of forming there. We even have great big triangles, which could be faces of an icosahedron. Uh, we'll get a bit more into what that means regarding the Earth shortly. Even on Saturn, uh, at the north pole of Saturn, we have this huge hexagon, which is double the width of the Earth. It's huge, and it kind of stays there. Uh, it kind of just maintains its composure. It's like a cymatic pattern. It just holds its energy there while everything spins around it. I mean, I don't know if this is just the nature of planets, the nature of the cosmos, but it does make you question what is underneath all this, what is this guiding source behind these different geometries we're finding on different planets, and how does it relate to us and the Earth? It just shows you another picture from NASA. Uh, just borrowed that off their website. And even on Saturn's moon, the Apatus, we find this ridge that goes around the whole center of the moon, which is about 12 miles tall, 12 miles wide. It's almost like a wall has been built around the dead center. It's like a tennis ball has been cut in half and glued together, roughly. Uh, it's very strange. So there's lots of these strange anomalies, which really kind of caught my attention when I was looking at grids on Earth. Uh, this just shows you uh, if a dodecahedron is placed within a sphere which is a 12-sided polygon. Um, and you can see that when the, these Russian researchers back in the early 70s uh, first did some research on this, because they, they were inspired by uh, someone else, Ivan Sanderson, we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, they realized if you just place a dodecahedron, fix it at the North and South Pole and rotate it to the right place, the whole Mid-Atlantic Ridge almost follows this whole dodecahedral shape. So we're seeing first glimpses, really, of a planetary grid here. And even, even Plato famously said that the ball, uh, the Earth looks like a ball sewn from 12 pieces of skin, paraphrased, uh, which would resemble a dodecahedron, so it's got 12 faces. And this is the, the Ivan Sanderson research, which kind of you know, really blew my mind. I mean, this was found in the early 1970s. Um, he was a paranormal investigator, he was a biologist, but he did some excellent uh, research on the different what he called vile vortices around the world. And it was, it was later published by Chris Bird um, in an article, um, The Twelve Devil's Graveyards Around the World. And the Bermuda Triangle, which we're actually sailing through right now, um, or maybe last night when we were sleeping, um, we were very close to that. And there's other anomalies. He found lots of different plane disappearances, anomalies, uh, time dilations. Uh, and other strange things happening in certain places around the world. When he mapped them out, he realized they were equally spaced, uh, plus the North and South Pole. Here we have Hawaii, around Easter Island, uh, the Devil's Triangle or off uh, the coast of Japan, and many others. He shows you the 3D version of that. It's actually what he realized he found was a icosahedron, which is a 20-sided, 20, 20 triangles um, over a sphere. Uh, and this just shows you it here. And obviously the points are very interesting. And because he found he does so much research on this, he really did find a planetary grid at work. Not, not maybe the planetary grid, because I think there's many different ideas about this, uh, not just one. But he found something going on, that these platonic solids, or these natural geometries which fall within spheres, do have an effect on the surface. And maybe we're so small, we don't really get it, we don't understand it. Uh, but it's when you start looking at the migratory paths of animals, fault lines, and, all the, and lots of other global movements, the way, the way things move around the Earth, you start to see the patterns. Uh, this just shows you the icosahedron here. I've uh, just drawn a line through Africa there, which uh, is basically what I believe is the original prime meridian, uh, which many other people are realizing. Uh, it, it kind of clicks everything into place when you're looking at the placement of sites around the world. The white line there is a very famous uh, great earth circle, like a global ley line that goes all the way around the planet, discovered by Jim Allenson. Um, and he found many hundreds of sites kind of linking around this. If any of you have seen Revelation of the Pyramids uh, documentary, this is the line they're talking about, although they've widened it to uh, something like 100 kilometers wide, which is cheating. Um, yeah. You know, this was he's, he's extremely accurate. It's a very thin line around the planet. We'll look more at Earth circles as we go along. But first, let's have a quick look at the Russians' research because they originally were inspired by Ivan Sanderson's icosahedral grid he found. Uh, but they felt something else was going on. They actually, you know, these were kind of top right Russian scientists. This is all published in journals back in the early 70s. Some of their original illustrations here, and they believe that the Earth 
you know, the crystal, there was a crystal at the center of the earth, and over millions of years of spinning, it attracted mass to it and created the earth. And they believe the uh, energetic uh, effect of this crystal can still be detected on earth. And they believe it's an icosahedron and a dodecahedral system, which is sort of pumping out from this crystal at the center, very similar to the Hopi creation myth, uh, as we heard earlier.